Okay, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Mauricio Morin. I'm an engineer here at VMware. And let's talk about how to do any ingress, uh, ingress with any Kubernetes that you may have using NSX Advanced Load Balancer. So this is a disclaimer, although there's no um, roadmap items here. This is our agenda. We'll talk about the challenges we have today with ingress, how Avi, which is an advanced NSX Advanced Load Balancer, how it works, how do you install it in a short demo. So the challenges today are our ingress controllers, they are contained in the cluster. Whenever you have to, um, whenever you have to do ingress and you have to deliver applications to your customers, it's not only load balancing, it's not only the ingress. You have to do other things. You have to maybe you have to do GSLB, you have to do WAF, you have to have DNS. And this makes you have to have multiple discrete solutions. You have complex operations. No, you don't have end-to-end -end visibility. And the automation, it's only inside your Kubernetes cluster. So what we bring with Avi or NSX Advanced Load Balancer, we try to bring a single solution that solves all these problems. So we have one load balancer that can do end-to-end -end load balancing. And so it's operationally simple. It's, we have automation end-to-end -end with elasticity, and we also have rich observability. So when you deploy an application to your customers, we have observability, we have visibility end-to-end. -end. So that's what we try to do. So how do we do this? for Kubernetes, so how do we deliver ingress services inside of Kubernetes services? It's using what we call AKO, Avi Kubernetes Operator. So how does it work? So Avi is a, is a, a load balancing fabric that is composed of two parts. The Avi controller, this is responsible for the, the management plane, and we have the Avi service engines they are the data plane of our load balancing fabric. So it, regardless if you are load balancing containers or not, we always have the controller and the service engines. What's different when we're talking about ingress services is that we have this pod that is running inside your Kubernetes clusters called AKO, Avi, Avi Kubernetes Operator. This is a pod that you run inside each Kubernetes clusters that translates all your operations inside your Kubernetes clusters, calls your Avi controller, the APIs, and programs your service engines, your data plane, according to what you need for your ingress services to work. So how does this work regardless of what Kubernetes uh, cluster you have? So this is the compatibility guide to this last version of the AKO that we have. As you can see, we work with all Kubernetes flavors that you have. It doesn't matter if it's OpenShift, Kubernetes, or Tanzu, all CNIs. And it can work, public clouds, private clouds. And in the public clouds, you can even use their offerings. So you can use AKS, GKE, or you can have vanilla Kubernetes in this um, IaaS services. So you can do whatever you like, Avi is completely compatible with these, um, with these offerings. And how do you install this? So considering, considering you already have Avi installed, I'm not going over the Avi installation, not going over, in, going over the Kubernetes installation, how do you install Avi? It's pretty straightforward. So all you have to do is create a name, uh, uh, namespace for the Avi for the AKO, it's called Avi system. You do, you add the repository for the AKO, and then you create this values.yaml file where you will configure the, the characteristics of your specific Kubernetes version. These are other helpful commands. If you don't have Helm in your cluster, this will help you install Helm. This is the important part. This is where people always have some trouble installing AKO is the values.yaml file because this is what makes the, this is where the differences 
between the different Kubernetes clusters, this is what is different. Because, and what I like to call here is CNI, CNI plugins. They may, be, they may be different. Cluster name, this is just the name. But what is really important here is the, if you want to have it, the default ingress controller for your cluster, the most important setting here is the one we call service type. This is how you say, how will the pods, uh, how will the service engines, remember the service engines are the data plane of our load balancing fabric. So different from uh, most ingress uh, solutions, that they run as pods inside the Kubernetes clusters. We run our ingress as VMs outside of the Kubernetes clusters. So this is very good because we can get lots of power. We don't have um, performance constraints. But it's also, there's a drawback. We have some difficulty. We might have some difficulties with the connectivity. How do our service engines reach the pods? So this is how we say what is the connectivity strategy? So our service engines, the data plane of our load balancing fabric, how can they connect to the pod? So the next slide details the options that we have. I'm gonna go right to left because it's the, easier, the easiest one with the one that has more details. So what is node port? When you create a service in Kubernetes, you can create a service type node port. The node port, if you use node port on that option that I told you that on the previous slide, you can use any CNI and you won't have problems with connectivity because it will use the node IP, the, your Kubernetes node IP, and it will load balance to use that IP. So you don't have reachability directly to the pod. It's a universal option, but you lose some features. So the, the service engine won't be able to persist sessions. They won't have health monitoring. So it's not the best option. Cluster IP, it's good. You have direct connectivity to the pods. You can persist. You use service type cluster IP, but there's a problem. You might have to program static routes to the, cluster, to, to the pods. Avi does this automatically. If you have services like EKS that the pods are directly routable, you, will, you can use this with no problem. But when we have a third option that is the best of both worlds, where you don't need um, these static routes, which is node port local, but this requires the entry of CNI, which is VMware's open source CNI, where we can use cluster IP and don't have to program static routes. This is the best option if you're using the on-premise solution. Go with this if you're using your on-prem solution. If you're using public clouds and you, the pods are already, already routable, you can use cluster IP, it'll be simple. So after you create your values.yaml file, just do a Helm install with your values.yaml file, see if it ran okay, and you're all set. This is a quick demo, quick video, just to see if it, if it worked, let me show the video. So that, that's my Avi. I have my Ingress already working. I have other clusters. I have an Ingress. This is the service, yelp.avi, mmrn.corp. I'm gonna apply it. As I apply this Ingress, what I'm gonna, I'm gonna see a new virtual service will be created. So the, all, is, all this is done automatically. If I see, get, if I get uh, kubectl get pods in this namespace yelbab, I'm gonna see that my pods will be created and a new virtual, virtual, virtual service, a new pool was created. If I try to access my application, it is working and I can try it out. If I try out my application, I can vote. This is a simple application where I can vote for my favorite healthy food. I have IHOP, Chipotle, Outback. It's working. And what I like to show 
so I can close out my presentation is the visibility. So AVI is really nice because it shows visibility. I have end-to-end -end timing. I have the logs. Each click that I, that I did on that application, I can see the votes, every vote. I got the duration, end-to-end -end visibility, my IP, all this rich information. If I wanted to have WAF, whatever I needed to, wanted to put in my, in my application, it's easy to include. If I had more clusters, we have AMKO, where we leverage GSLB to, to distribute my ingress service in multiple clusters. That's what I had for you. Thank you very much. Any questions? Yes, works with VCF and Tenzo. You deploy it after VCF. Yeah. So deploy VCF, you deploy your Tenzu cluster. After the Tenzu cluster is deployed, you deploy AVI, and then you do that Helm install. Right. So that's why um, I showed after you have your cluster deployed, you have the AVI controller deployed, you do this. And then you have this available in your clusters. So you, you can't have AVI deployed first and then do this? Yeah, yeah, you can have Avi doing whatever you want to do with Avi. You have a Kubernetes cluster can, that can be deployed using VCF, and then all you have to do is do the Helm install inside your cluster for the, for the ingress. Yes? If, you have a, if your clusters are managed through TMC, um, is the AKO operator available as a as something that you can deploy into your TNC managed clusters? Mm, is your like there's a catalog in the I forget what the, the TNC has a catalog of the products. I'm not sure. Okay. I have to look into that. Okay. I I don't know. Sorry. You. You're welcome. There's lots of there. Yes. Lots and, and the parts move so fast. Oh, yeah, exactly. It might not be today. But it might not be today. Tomorrow. So I'm not sure. We gotta, we gotta go to the next. Okay, sorry. If you guys want to ask questions, feel free to yeah. come over here.